Today we're talking about solving what's called a compound inequality. Compound inequality just means that um, instead of dealing with one inequality at a time, we're just going to be dealing with two. So a compound inequality is when we have two inequalities joined by the words and or the words, the word, or. I'm going to put these in quotes because I hate writing or, or. And remember, uh, graphing, we use an open circle when we use this is less than or greater than, and a closed circle for uh, less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. All right, so we'll talk about the case or. What does it mean? Well, in words, if I say x is less than negative 3 or x is greater than negative, uh, greater than 2, um, that just gives me some options. So what would that look like on a number line? Let's see. On a number line, I may have 0 in the middle of my number line. Number is greater than 0 to my right and numbers less than zero to my left. When I say or, that means I'm, I'm going to have to make a choice between two things, right? Sort of, that's what you, at least that's what I think of when I think of or. What it's going to look like is two separate little graphs. So when I say x is less than negative three, I'm going to sort of just cover up the greater than greater than two part with my finger and worry about that x is less than three for right now. X is less than negative three. So less than, I know I want to uh, use an open circle and I want to cover values with my arrow that are less than negative three. So I want to head to the left. Make sure that's an arrow. So now that that's graphed, I want to uncover uncover the greater than 2 part because now I'm looking at x is greater than 2. So if x is greater than 2, then I want to put an open circle because it's just greater than at 2, and I want to draw my arrow to cover numbers that are larger than 2. And that's what an or statement would look like. This is what I mean by you have two separate lines that you would have to uh, make a decision between, one or the other. Some teacher told me that she, th the, what she thought of was, uh, was that she could really only eat very, very hot food or very, very cold food, but nothing in between. So that's, that's what I think of with the, uh, the or statement now. And... When we write it as an inequality, we just write the inequality exactly the way we would, uh, you would read it. X is less than negative 3, or the word or, and you just have to write it down, X is greater than 2. So we, we want to join those two separate inequalities with the word or. Let's take a look at and. All right, so now I have x is greater than or equal to 1 and less than 5. So and is going to be a little bit different. Instead of having two bars going in either direction, I'm going to have one kind of closed-in bar by itself. Let's take a look. First, we'll draw ourselves a number line. Let's say I'll put, I'm going to start here at 7, 6, 5, 4, two, one, zero, negative one. Okay. So I really just want to look at the part of the number line that's important to me. So again, I'm just going to deal with one part at a time. X is greater than or equal to one. So greater than or equal to, I'm going to, first off, I want to start at one. I want to draw a circle above one and it's greater than or equal to, so I want to close it in. 
and I'm going to have a line heading to my right because it's greater than. And it says it is less than 5. It's also less than 5. So I know I'm going to have an open circle at 5. And fill in backwards this way. And I just want to have the line in between. So my solution set for this is everything from this closed in circle to everything just before this open circle. Remember, the open circle means I don't include 5 as a solution. So if I say x is greater than or equal to 1 and less than 5, x could be 1, it could be 1.1, it could be 2, it could be 3, it could be 4, it could be 4.9, it could be anything that's less than 5 or uh, greater than or equal to 1. Anything that fits that definition. Now, when I actually write it in my regular old inequality interval notation, which is the same stuff you've been doing, I kind of want to write the same thing. So I'll show you here on, on uh, the left-hand side. If I have x is greater than or equal to 1, I would write that as x is greater than... I'm sorry, that says... Hmm. Yeah, x is greater than or equal to 1. And then I also have uh, x is less than 5. And a little trick, a little something I can do is I can rewrite this first one using... I can rewrite this first little term here using the symmetric property. I'm going to write it now as x is, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to write 1 is less than or equal to x. And then I kind of want to just overlap my x's. So if I overlap my x's, then I'll bring this one up here and put x is less than 5. And this is the interval notation. It's how it's written. So really, you just want to write x in the middle, the number that x is greater than to the left, and you want to maintain that relationship. So it says x is greater than or equal to. So you want to make sure the if it's greater than, that the little alligator mouth opens up to x, and it's less than 5. It's, it might seem a little bit tricky, but I think you'll get used to it.